Hey guys, we're going to get started here in just a second. Thanks for joining the broadcast this morning. I don't know if you can call this a broadcast. I'd call it a live stream. Does that qualify as a broadcast? I don't really know. I have no idea. I am uh, live right now on Instagram. Uh, although Instagram can only see me, can't see any questions, unfortunately. Uh, we are on YouTube. Le uh, we're on Facebook. And we're also on um, uh, Periscope on Twitter. So if you know anybody who wants to join this live stream, bring them, bring them, bring them all. What's everybody drinking today? I'm curious. I put in put in a comment. I'm curious. I am drinking uh, some very strong Starbucks coffee that we made at the office. So that's what I did. So going to get started here in just about 30 seconds. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I'm going to pop up. I got the wrong thing up. See, this is what happens when I do it myself. There we go. Let's give that a whirl. All right. Neil Reed is in the house. Neil Reed, thank you so much for joining. How are you doing? God, you owe me a call, buddy. I mean, you do. You actually need to read this book again and remember to stay in contact because I've called you twice, I think. Not throwing you under the bus, but you're always a world traveler. So we need to uh, connect for sure. Pat Mueller drinking coffee at the lake, no less. I'm sure your view is way awesome this morning. Uh, Dennis, morning. Good morning, my friend. How are you doing? I don't know who Tennessee plays this weekend, but uh, I uh, am fairly certain that uh, you are going to at least be watching that game for sure. You are drinking a monster drink. You got to take it easy on that, buddy. You got to take it easy. One of the guys in my office, you know, had some heart palpitations this week. It was really weird for him. And uh, uh, I think he's been drinking too many energy drinks, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm trying to keep up here. Um, oh, yes, Neil. Smart play right there. Pour over Peru blend. That's awesome. I like it. Like it. I am a home roaster issue. <laughs> Pat, there can never be issues with that. Let me tell you very much. So um, you do on both counts very well. All right. I like that. Uh, oh, it's a bye week for uh, Tennessee this week. Okay. I, I got it. I got it. So you guys can't lose. <laughs> so, hey, I appreciate it very much that you guys are joining here. I um, wanted to come on on this live stream. A couple of big things to announce. The announcement of the Ripple Effect third edition third edition, improved content, new strategies, new ideas, how to network in a COVID uh, time that we are in. There is, uh, I think, more relevance to finding unique applications to connect and engage now more than ever. And uh, so I wanted to let you know that the book officially drops Monday. It will only be available on my website to begin with. Uh, we will get it on Amazon probably uh in the next 30 days or less. We uh, we wanted to uh, open this up to all of our Ripple community first, provide some pre-order opportunities for people to, you know, you know engage with the book, uh, find some other uh, avenues to engage with me. And uh, we've got some things, if you check it out at ripplecentral.com, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, it is we're already getting rave reviews. I mean, I'm so proud of this book. Uh, people have asked me why did I feel compelled to put out a third edition and uh, second edition has continued to do well, sells really well, but um, it just seemed like it was time for an update, right? You know, social networks have changed. It seemed like that uh, there was a lot of frustration and confusion with how to connect in this very non um, uh, non-physical world that we're living in right now, uh, being in a safe social distance. And it felt like it was time to maybe address some of those things, how to amp your game up in a virtual world um, and how to leverage the core strategies and approaches that I've got relative to the uh, the Ripple concept and, and really just update it in a, in a lot of ways. And to be perfectly honest with you, it is a, a concept that I'm so passionate about. And for the last few years, I kind of have gotten away from spending the time doing it as adequately as I wanted to. And I knew there were things I wanted to do differently with the book, but honestly, I, I just, uh, I made every excuse under the sun to not make that happen. And that was a, um, 
it was not uh, not exactly the best decision. I think you know, I it was a burning desire to resolve that. Let's just put it that way. Pat, thank you so much. Uh, keep up with the times. Yes, crazy as they are, there is no doubt in my mind that they are absolutely crazy. If you guys watching today, I, I appreciate you being here. Obviously, if you have questions, anything you want to ask me about the book, connecting, networking how to incorporate it into your teams or leadership, especially in these unusual times. I definitely would be happy to you know, help answer some of those questions. I do have a couple that came in early. Um, oh, I got comments actually. I was up early to watch this, Steve. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think I, I know who this Sandy is from Albuquerque. Thanks so much for joining and thanks for joining an hour early, Sandy. I know it is quite early out there and pre pretty chilly right this morning, I understand. You guys had some snow this week, pretty early snow, um, pretty uh, impressed. Ah, that coffee needed it. Woo, woo. Um, pretty impressed how uh, beautiful my home city looked uh, back in Albuquerque and and I kind of missed that I missed it. Um, it would have been nice. We were there last Thanksgiving when it snowed and man, it was magical. It was really, really cool. Uh, we got another question. looks like from Scott Tilly. Good morning, Steve. My question is this, can, can your, I think your book help me uh, or help my mid-level managers get better at relating to their direct reports? Ah, uh, Scott, thank you for that question. Absolutely. This book can help you um, help your mid-level managers uh, connect with their direct reports. Number one, it puts it front and center as to why connecting is so critical and important. I've been teaching organizations of all sizes for a long time the importance of this process because it does make a difference. Because when you can help your mid-level managers connect with the people that they depend on for their success, and you can think outside of the box other than just asking for the typical TPS reports, uh, you find a way to engage and connect you help those folks feel like there's a social deposit of their efforts in the in their job and in their work. They feel recognized, they feel important, and that is so absolutely critical in today's world. And so I think it's an, an absolute must. And I think uh, managers, leaders of all uh, you know levels can benefit from this book because it really does help uh, remind uh, the individual that's reading it why connecting is so critical to our success. I mean, if unless you're lucky enough to work or live in a vacuum, we all depend on somebody for our success and our ability to connect and engage with those people in ways that are, are you know, you could consider a little bit non-traditional, but really in a way that allows people to create some personal investment and develop those connections and what I call connection points with those people can make all the difference in the world. And so I definitely think that this book can help you. We've got some, don't know how many mid-level managers you have, but if you send me an email, steve at ripplecentral.com, we do have some corporate deals that we can make for volume purchases. We do programs around that that can tie into trainings, or I can do a virtual event, obviously, for uh, your team. Uh, we've had some organizations like American Express and Dell that have utilized this uh, book as a mechanism to get the conversation started on this concept, why connecting is important, why employee engagement is necessary, and why leaders need to be front and center to do it better. So thank you so much for that question. I really, really, really like that. That was good. Um, all right. There is a question that came in from, I'm not sure who, but will there be an audio version of this book? Yes, I have a mic. I have the technology. Uh, I have not had the time to, but I will. I will dedicate the time and the effort to get the audiobook up and out. There is um, a huge demand and I'm crushing a huge amount of books every year. Um, I used to read probably between 25 and 35 books a year myself for work or work oriented um, subjects. And then I always had two or three fiction books that I kind of read for pleasure. And the older I get, the more tired I get. And so audiobooks have become my absolute friend. So I understand uh, the need for having a version of the audiobook for the third edition. We'll absolutely be working on that and get it done. Uh, I, um, I had been in negotiation with uh, James Earl Jones uh, to be the narrator, uh, but um, you know, we got crossways. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I would never get crossways with James Earl Jones. He's awesome. But uh, then again, he, he won't take my call. 
whole thing about, uh, you know, the protective order. I don't understand it all. It's all legal jargon to me. But anyway, I will be recording it in my own voice, which hopefully I can work on my DJ voice and make it a little bit more interesting. Right now, I think my voice kind of sounds like two pole cats in a uh, sleeping bag, but I, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, but I am going to get the audio book out and I will get it out as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, let's see, Pat. Um, how do you overcome the fear of intimidation factor when you want to reach out to someone you think is out of my league? Well, there you go, Pat. Number one, no one is out of your league. There is nobody on this planet that is any more important than you. And the reality is that if you can approach connecting with people in that mindset, that there is a reason that they would want to connect with you, that you have something of value that you can bring to the table. And it's just a matter of having that at bat with them to show them. Then it really kind of helps frame that a little bit differently for you because it is really, really critical that you don't let your ego talk you off the ledge from making that connection. And it happens all the time. I see a lot of people that really struggle in a lot of ways to connect and engage uh, with the people that they need to because they're intimidated. And I, uh, I have been there. Trust me, I'm shy and introverted. I mean, for me to uh, be the guy that's out front and center talking about the importance of connecting when I'm the guy that would most like to just, you know, sink back into the corner of the, uh, the room uh, is kind of ironic. But at the end of the day, what choice do you have? You know, you can either have live with regrets by not reaching out and connecting with that person, or you can take a big swing and see if you connect. And I think a lot of times, especially depending on who that person is or how you term them out of your league, um, they are just like you and me. They put their pants on the same way. Uh, they, they get up every morning, they brush their teeth, hopefully, and uh, they go about their business. And so there is a commonality that we all share as human beings that they can't hide from <laughs> no matter how great or awesome they are, which makes it possible for you to connect. And when I kind of broke through those fears and self doubts in those environments uh, with those types of connections, it put me at ease and it allowed me to realize that there isn't anybody that uh, uh, wouldn't be lucky to know me and I wouldn't be lucky to know them. We just have to find a way to get together to see how awesome that can be. So I hope that happens uh, for you. And if you want to strategize about it, let me know. And you had posted a comment, it has to be your voice. It's a good one. Oh, thank you. I think you were mentioning or, or referring to the audio book I was just talking about. So yes, I will I will do that. I appreciate that very, very, very much. Um, put your questions in comments. Uh, definitely would love to, you know, hear or see any of those, what you're thinking, you know, what you think of the the new book, if you got it, if you haven't got it, you know, if you've got questions about getting it or how to, you know, get it, ripplecentral.com is where you can find it. We've got some pre-launch promotions going on, promotions that I think you're going to like. Uh, so check those out. Um, I first, uh, I read your first two and love them. First two editions, I think. Uh, I refer to them often and, and it's, a uh, is this a new edition on Amazon yet? Uh, Michelle, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, Oklahoma City. I love Oklahoma City. Got to speak there a couple years ago. Really, really neat. Um, the uh, answer is no, it's not in it on Amazon yet. I, uh, I live streamed a couple of weeks ago uh, about the, the, the launch was coming and uh, I elected to uh, talk about Amazon and how disappointed it's been for me as an author to get, you know, to be able to ship out to them, you know, cases of books and then have many of them come back completely trashed. And uh, I had originally thought I would not put it on Amazon, but there are so many people that use that as a trusted source to purchase and acquire their merchandise, including hard copies of the book, uh, that I think I'm going to have to, you know, relent and do it. I'm hopeful that we can, you know, get a little bit of better treatment than we've gotten in the past because it's a big expense for us to be able to produce these books. And when they come back, not in sellable condition, because one of their automated robots, like, you know, put like a forklift through it. It, uh, it hurts, man. It hurts. And then they ship it back to you. No dear John letter, nothing. They just like send it back to you. And next thing you know, you're getting dinged on, um, you know, Hey, you owe us money. Cause you, you, you are, uh, we sent you something back and it's, it's very frustrating. So, uh, 
I, I would encourage you to check it out on ripplecentral.com right now because I can sign that book for you. I can personalize it. I can autograph it, do whatever you want to that book. Uh, you know, uh, I can't do that on Amazon. I can't sign them and then send them for their inventory to be held. So that's kind of a bummer, but it will be up there eventually, probably within the next 30 days. Um, please don't hate for me for saying this, but I hate networking. I'm not sure if this book can help me overcome that. Bobby, 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 you and I are exactly the same person. I too hate networking. I will tell you right now that uh, even though I wrote a book on networking, networking has never been my strong suit. It's never been my comfort level because in most instances where you find yourself in a networking environment, you feel like you have to have that elevator pitch. You have to feel like you have that, uh, uh, you know, you, you've got that pressure to perform or to port your wares or your services. And Bobby, uh, that's not what networking is about. Networking to me is about connecting. It's about engaging. It's heart to heart, belly to belly communication, conversation, engagement. And uh, you can't do that when you're shoving a business card in somebody's uh, face. So I absolutely understand your trepidation about networking. What I often have told my clients and the folks you'll hear it repeatedly in this book, I definitely think it could help you if there are some concerns there. Um, networking doesn't happen at those events. Networking happens in other environments. It could be standing in line at Starbucks, could be at in, in the line at the grocery store, going and holding a door open in the office building when we're all out in the physical world. Or sometimes it's just engaging somebody on social media, connecting with somebody on Twitter or Instagram, telling them how much you like or enjoy the content that they put out there, uh, finding an avenue to have a conversation and engage. And I know that a lot of times the power networkers get really nervous about this because they're like, what? Oh, what? I mean, this is the way we do it. This is how it goes. Oh, uh, what? Yeah. Caveman. Uh, um, that's the only way. Uh, yeah. Power networkers do not do well with our process and our system, the, net, the, the approach that we take with Ripple, because they are so accustomed to that elevator pitch, shove a business card in your face. And then immediately try and figure out if you're a victim for whatever their product or service is. And uh, I shouldn't say victim. I mean, prospect. Um, the reality is the best connections that I've ever made have come from casual conversations engaged at a high level that have allowed people to be more who they are at their heart of hearts and allowed individuals you know, to feel like they were okay to share. And I come prepared with questions. I have a different approach to, you know, helping them, uh, you know, feel comfortable in the engagement and in the environment that we have. And more business has flowed to me because of that. I've got to be honest with you. It's been amazing in that regard. And so, Bobby, I definitely feel for you. I highly recommend uh, you check out the book because I think it can help you. I wrote it for all those people that were frustrated in uh, disappointed with their networking efforts because as an entrepreneur since 20, I've been 22 uh, years old, uh, networking was a major part of my business for a long time and it never worked in the traditional sense. It always came from different aspects, what I was doing, how I was approaching it. And uh, I think these strategies can help you as well. So I appreciate, appreciate that question very, very much. Uh, we got another couple of comments in here. Uh, Pat, thank you for the uh, the smiley face and the upside down face. I love that. I'm not exactly sure what that emoji is, the upside down one, but like, did I turn you on your head or, you know, I don't know, maybe clarify that one for me because I, I'm, as my boys will tell me, I'm, I'm not as hip as they are on this emoji thing. Uh, so I, I probably should have them deciphering that, but Neil, what I learned from, uh, your first version was you can connect with anyone. So long you understand how you can bring equal value. Absolutely. And here's the key. You want to try and discover the value that you need to provide to them more so than trying to force your value, uh, for whatever it is that you have. And, um, I remember our first meeting, Neil, that we had way back when in my office, it was really interesting because at the time, um, you were kind of exploring a couple of different avenues. I was kind of doing something that was so unrelated to anything that you really were focused on. And yet somehow we were, we managed to have this meaningful, amazing conversation, found that we had a lot in common. Next thing I know, we're, you know, playing soccer together. We're eating burgers together. We're having some beers and enjoying the process of getting to know one another. And though I can say we probably haven't directly produced commerce for one another in any capacity. Uh, I can say that we have opened several doors and opportunities for one another, which has probably been far more, far more valuable for us both. And it wouldn't happen had we just dove in and like, 
here's our business agenda. And here's, here's what I need from you. Or here's what I'm trying to push on you or sell on you. And that stuff didn't work. And so I, I think that, uh, you know, it's really critical and you are a testament to that process. So I appreciate, appreciate that very, very much. Uh, hi, Nigel from London. Big fan of your work, sir. Thank you. Thanks. I did not know I was big with the Brits. Cheers to that. I'm drinking coffee, but you know, tea, you know, it's probably tea time over there. Cheers to that. Uh, thank you for what you do. How has this pandemic affected your ability to ripple? Ooh, phenomenal question. Nigel, here's the thing. It has changed the landscape for a lot of people and a lot of things are different. Um, most people find out about me because I don't have a big marketing campaign. I don't do a great job on uh, social media. I put out a few things, but I mean, there are massive voices out there that do a much better job getting attention. And uh, I wish I was those people and I wish I could figure that uh, process out, but I, I haven't. Uh, but what I have figured out during this pandemic process is that connection is more important now than it ever has been. And even though we don't have the physical connection right now, the physical ability to engage uh, face to face over a meal or, you know, a beer or at an event like an eight minute ripple. Um, and I know some of you are like, hey, weekend and, you know, different environments are different, you know, but a lot of people are still playing it pretty cautious and a lot of people are uncomfortable in those environments. And so for me, that's been the hardest part because I am a hugger. I am a physical contact kind of guy. The fist bump is is fine. The elbow, you know, thing is okay. But I'd much rather like, you know, get right in there, high five you, hug you, see what's up, you know, be across. So that part has been hard for me because um, I, I, I get my energy, regardless of being shy and introverted, I get my energy from other people. I get my enthusiasm, my motivation, my desire. But um, somewhere about like the end of March, I got through a period of kind of depressiveness, um, really worried and concerned like everybody was about what the heck was happening and what was going on. And never in a million years would have thought that the world would be the way it is. But then I realized that um, this wasn't going away and it wasn't changing and that I could sit here and wallow in my own self-pity and worry or I could just start picking up the phone and calling people, not texting, not emailing, but literally picking up the phone and calling. I have one. Oh, I'm on Instagram live right now with it. So, but the, these things make calls, right? Like the iPhone magically allows you to connect with other people. And we have the most common connection point that, you know, or we have a common connection point that is relevant. And much like your question, you know, what's it done to my rippling? I actually think it's actually improved it. I think that relationships have gotten re-engaged. I have uh, refired up the engine. Uh, quite a bit. I got this book done during the pandemic. I got uh, ideas for other books that I'm starting to begin to put together and work on. It's been an incredibly uh, rewarding period of time for me in terms of the creative process. And it's allowed me to you know, hone in and test some skills that I might not have otherwise because I was too busy or I had too many events or I was you know, traveling from here or there. Um, so that part has changed, but I would say for a good, uh, in, in a good way, uh, the ripple and the process of just reaching out and asking enthusiastically how someone is doing, however, is a major ripple that you can create, um, right here, right now. I encourage you to look at your network, find two or three people that you know that you haven't talked to in a while and you can start off by, Hey, I was thinking about you today. I just wanted to see how you're doing. I wanted to check in as to how things are going through this crazy COVID time and just make sure you're doing okay. People just blow up with appreciation because we so desperately need that human contact, even if it is over the phone. So I appreciate that question very much. It's a good one. And, and thank you for tuning in from London. I really appreciate that. Uh, I hope to get over there one day. I, you know, if you've got opportunities once this pandemic is over, I would love to come ripple in London and uh, think it would be a great, great place to, to, to play with these tools and strategies because I, I know it can make a difference. In fact, several of my good friends are from the UK and they love this process. And so, Nigel, thank you so much for being a fan and thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. I uh, got a couple of comments here. Um, uh, let's see. Pat, I, don't, I missed this one originally, so I, um, oh, Lord, it's a good thing. Okay, I, I don't know what a good thing was, but 
I'm going to take your word for it uh, for sure. Miss Brewer, thank you so much for joining. Uh, how do I get past writer's block? Sometimes I feel like I can't get the words out fast enough. And then the next day I have no words to get out. Ooh, I love this question. Uh, for those of you that are on this uh, today, um, Christina Brewer is a former soccer player that, uh, you know, that I was lucky enough to coach an amazing, incredible woman. She was on my podcast just a few episodes back. Please go check it out. It was hilarious. We had a good time. It was phenomenally fun. And we're going to do a sequel very soon. But she is a dynamo. Um, so, Christina, your question. I went through the exact same thing. That process is, uh, I think actually that is, um, I think every writer goes through it. And I would say that one of the things, you know, that you want to do is make sure that you carry your journal around all the time because you never know when inspiration will strike or when those words will fall out of the sky or if the stars align or your muse wakes up and poof, all of a sudden that stuff is there. You want to go for it. You got to have something to capture it. I use my iPhone a lot because I have ideas all the time that I maybe don't have pen and paper nearby. So I use my recorder on my iPhone. Um, but you'll go through those periods and then you'll go through these periods where all of a sudden there's nothing. And I've heard it said, you know, it's writer's block. It's the death block. Oh my God. It's the creativity killer. I actually believe that those forced pauses are actually really designed, excuse me, for um, for you to reset and realign. And it's a cause, uh, excuse me, it's a break to cause you to slow down and reassert. And so two things that I do when I run into that. Number one, it tells me that I'm not ready to write whatever it was that I was going to write. Uh, or whatever I was going to do was going to be rubbish. Nigel, rubbish. I picked that up from you, uh, my Brit friends. And uh, Carol, if you're watching, you, you'll appreciate that. Uh, but I will take a walk or I will meditate. And what I'll find is that when I do that mental reset with myself, all of a sudden, new doors of creativity just open. And it may not happen on that day. It may not happen for a couple of days. Keep doing it. Push that reset button over and over again. And then all of a sudden you'll find yourself in this creative flow. And it is, it, it's, it, it will change your perspective on writing, but uh, don't give up. Don't get frustrated. The worst thing you can do is get frustrated because that frustration just seems to keep everything locked down uh, more and you don't want to do that. So I hope that's helpful. And you know how to get a hold of me. So let's have a call. Let's have a talk. If you're going through one of these periods, you know, I'm your boy. You need to call me. Um, Pat Mueller, I find myself being bolder in the words I use to communicate with people. You during this pandemic, bolder, more engaged, more action oriented. Yes, I think so. Um, I think that, um, <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the world that we live in right now, um, some people have probably taken it to the extreme uh, where there's no uh, couth or politeness um, in the world. But I do think that now it's the time to ask for the stuff you want. Hey, I've been thinking about this, you know, sitting at home, you know, being in quarantine or whatever. And you've got that one person or that point of contact in your network. You're like, man, I really need to start something with that person or I really want to run this idea. But in the normal case of our day-to-day -day lives when we're not in dealing with the pandemic, we probably wouldn't have the courage to do it. Do it. Now is the time because you know what? People are open to big ideas. People are open to bigger conversations and people are more uh, appreciative of the bolder uh, words that we're using, the engagement that we're prepared to do. In fact, they're desperate for it because they're so sick of being on Zoom calls for hours at a time. <laughs> so I would say, uh, Hats off to you, my friend. That is beautiful. I think that is awesome. Joanne. Oh, my God, Joanne. How are you doing? Logging in from Puerto Rico, and you just finished the third edition. I hope you loved it. I hope you liked it. Um, I can't believe you took it on your vacation. You were not supposed to be thinking about work stuff. This was a vacation. But Joanne is a, a client of my software company, and we've become fast friends. We have a common connection point in Star Wars. We are big Star Wars fans. In fact, Joanne, just so you know, not that I'm taking my clothes off online because they will ban me for that. I got my Mandalorian going on today. I'm going to, I'm going to just wear this, but I, I, you know, I was asking my wife last night if I should dress up for this. And she's like, well, yeah, I mean, make sure you wear pants, but I didn't. 
I can't do everything, but I didn't put a shirt on. Uh, so I hope you're having a great time <laughs> in Puerto Rico. Um, it looks like you've got one. One of the positive things about the pandemic is that many of my colleagues are working from home and all those connections that were more professional have become more personal. As we hear pets in the background, sometimes children, and we're discovering that there is an entire process that allows us to create personal connections. Absolutely. I am finding that there is an opportunity for organizations, leaders specifically, to allow people to, you know, reveal a little bit more about their personal lives. What, what goes on behind, you know, that person when they are not at the office or not behind that computer monitor or whatever. And that is the one advantage of Zoom that I think uh, that it, it opens up kind of a, a world. I find myself, I go in, I'm in the office a lot and uh, I have Bloomberg on all the time and they always have these interviews from people who are working from home. And uh, I always find it fascinating about their backgrounds and what they're doing and um, you know, how they, how they have, you know, these different books. I'm always looking to see if anybody's got my book, but, um, that's kind of selfish, but I, I find all these things that people put in their background because it either makes them look super smart or there's things of genuine interest and you can't see it right now. Cause I've got my studio flipped right now, but I've got all sorts of fun things, star Wars figures, different, um, you know, uh, toys that make me happy. This is my creative space. This is where I get my most bang for the buck. And what I've actually found is when people have come in here and looked at this or have seen me on other videos and seen some of the, the backgrounds, whether it be Napoleon Dynamite, Iron Man, Spider-Man, you know, whatever it is, they absolutely find a way to engage or connect. Or people have seen me like just playing with my Rubik's Cube and, oh, I had one of those as a kid or I, I don't even know what happened to mine or I wish I had it. Those things open up the opportunity to have those conversations and engage at a deeper level with the people that work for us. And it's so critical and key to building those relationships. And that is where we will build our connections with those employees, deepen and strengthen those during this pandemic and make them even better. And so when we are back closer together, more collaboration, more innovation, more great stuff can come from that. So thank you so much. And yes, this is the way. If you guys don't understand what that is, oh my God, you're missing out on one of the greatest television series on the planet, Mandalorian. Uh, it's killing me. I'm not watching it today because I got to wait till my other son is able to watch it. And so I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to find that period of time today to get that done. But oh my gosh, I, I can't wait. Um, but I love that. Thanks for that question and that comment. Focus on saying more positive things to support folks who are less likely to reach out. Absolutely, Pat. You you hit the nail on the head because a lot of people, let's be honest, this entire pandemic situation has got people thrown for a massive loop. And so there are a lot of people out there frustrated, scared, depressed, and you've got to find a way to bring them up and create that positivity for them because you can't do it face to face. You don't know what they are maybe going through because you're not having lunch with them or you're not seeing them at the office or you're not uh, hanging out on the sideline at the kid's soccer game or something, right? You have to find ways to connect. And so the more positive things that you can bring to each conversation, each engagement, each Zoom call, the better it's going to be, I promise you. And so that is absolutely accurate. So thank you for sharing that for sure. Uh, let's see here. We've got to go from, we had, uh, okay, here we go. Got another one. How are people networking now that networking events aren't happening thanks to the pandemic? RT, Pittsburgh, go Steelers. You guys are having a great season. Wow. I mean, compared to my Dallas Cowboys, anybody's having a great season at this point. I mean, when Baker Mayfield and the Browns have more wins than the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, God, I hate 2020. No, I'm just kidding. Totally kidding. Uh, well, from a football perspective, I definitely hate 2020. But um, how people are networking, and congratulations to your Steelers, by the way. I have good friends that are going to be on my uh, super announcement I'm going to make here in just a minute uh, on my stream on uh, Monday uh, that are huge uh, Pittsburgh fans. And, uh, you know, they're they're over the moon right now how, the, how well the team's doing. I think people are taking their networking efforts online. I think more people are relying on engagement through um, social networks. Mistakes that I've seen people doing during the pandemic is just to spend hours upon hours on their LinkedIn, just sending connection after connection after connection after connection. I my my box is got to be at capacity of people who are like, 
I know damn well that they have no idea who I am, but my profile is interesting or they think that they can sell me a product or service. Um, I'm a unique profile because it's I'm a ripple one day. I'm software entrepreneur another day and I'm other things other days. And I, I'm unique. I'm a, a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I prefer Captain Crunch, but um, sometimes Frosted Flakes. Um, no, in all honesty, I'm definitely not a comedian either. Clearly, um, I have three companies and I think I get people that get exposure and think that they've got something that they can sell me uh, all the time. So I get a lot of LinkedIn connections a lot more during the pandemic because people are at home. And I would highly recommend not doing that. I honestly think that before you can connect and engage, and I, I could go off for an hour on how bad people do LinkedIn, but um, that is not the way to network. You have to have net networking opportunities may have changed somewhat during this pandemic but our approach to it doesn't need to. And that means authentic connection, heart to heart conversation, heart to heart, belly, belly conversations and engagement still at a high level, a high meaningful level. That means, hey, you know, can we get together and God forbid, maybe it's a Zoom call. <laughs> I know people are like zoomed out, right? Or go to meeting uh, or teams or whatever the hell is out there. Um, but sometimes just having that virtual coffee or Hey, could we spend 15 minutes? I'd love to get to know a little bit more about your business. And I'd like to share a little bit of my story, but you have to have that engagement first. You have to have a reason to connect. And uh, I think a lot of times people do it too much with just a business agenda. I had somebody who was like, I'm totally fascinated with what you're doing with the book. And I'm actually writing an article and I'd be really interested in learning about Ripple. So I scheduled a meeting with this lady and literally she asked me one question. I shared a little bit of information about how the book came up. And then it was 30 minutes of her talking nonstop about what she's doing, how she's done it, why she's great. She's awesome. And it was, um, I mean, I was like, ah! um, if I could have been mainlining something stronger than coffee that day, I promise you I would have been. But that's the problem that I think people run into with the networking on, you know, in non face to face, because it would have been clear had we been face to face, actually, that uh, 30 minutes would not have gone on because <laughs> every time I tried to, hey, well, you know, hey, up, and she would just keep talking um, when you're in physical space, you can just get up and leave. It's really weird. Oh, you know, sorry. I'm feeling a little sick to my stomach and I need to go find a restroom and then you just walk out the door. Um uh, that sounds rude. You shouldn't do that. But um, you get my point. Online is a little bit harder because you feel like you're stuck right on the phone. You're on that Zoom call, whatever. And I think people are continuing to make the bad habit of pushing their agendas way too much more so than trying to just check in with that person and get to know that person and engage them. Um, you know, what are some of the challenges? What are some of their wins during this pandemic? What, how have they approached it? How are they dealing with the kids in the background? Or like Joanne just mentioned, you know, their pets, you know, <laughs> barking in the middle of the conference call or whatever. Everybody's got a story at this point, And that's the good thing. And I think if you can start there, that's where some of those genuine networking opportunities can really begin to take hold. So that is what I would suggest. So thank you for that. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, Art T and good luck to your Steelers. Uh, let's see here. We got another one in, um, my team has used your concept for years. Thank you very much. It really made a difference when we read your last book. Can't wait to see what's in the new edition. Bridget, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, um, I mentioned you guys, I think earlier, um, I really have, um, been really appreciative of all the people that have come to me because of the engagement that we had, where we profiled the book, kind of went through it, kind of leadership development, and then developed the program for, uh, for your senior leaders. It was really phenomenal. This book, I think, brings even more strategies and ideas to the table. Uh, definitely think it would be relevant for you guys now, especially. Um, I know your operation has been virtual and continues to you know, to move as such. I've talked to a few folks over there that um, that have been struggling because they're so engaged with their teams that they are really desperately missing that physical space contact. And so uh, I do know that, the, that you guys are going through a lot of the challenges a lot of major companies are, but um, we should talk definitely. And I appreciate you know, the positive comment and thank you for jumping on today and, and uh, sharing that. That, makes the, <laughs> that um, means the world to me and, and made a huge difference. Uh, we got another one from Chris Williams. I think I know this, Chris Williams. Uh, keep on rippling, brother. I will. You as well, my friend. Uh, we've got somebody here um, that is apparently 
I have a suspicion who this person is, but I, I will not call them. Oh, yes, I saw it at the end now. It's <laughs> one. How about the Cowboys, Steve? Yes, how about those Cowboys? I think they lack authentic leadership. I don't think they're doing a good job uh, executing. I don't think they're all on the same page. I think that I, um, I'm i waiting any day to get the call for, uh, I'm like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. I'm out there practicing every day in front of my VHS camera. I'm ready. I mean, by the time you go through four quarterbacks, call me. I mean, I can't do any worse. Let's be honest. Um, Juan, I know I owe you a call, uh, and I will um, probably not call you now after that comment. <laughs> I will call you for sure. Uh, how did you get inspired to write this book? Um, thank you for asking the question. I'm not sure who did because you didn't uh, put a name on it. But uh, this book actually goes back to when I sold my first company and was doing some consulting and, and was actually really recognizing for um, – sort of those first early clients, they had asked me to come in and teach them about customer service and business development, sales, um, ideas and strategies. And what I recognized, you know, customer service in sales, there's a huge ripple component to it, right? There's a huge connection component because you're, as a customer service rep, you're connecting with that customer because they have invested in you money, time, effort, and your product or service and how you interact and engage with them is absolutely critical to reinforcing that experience that they have. And so that was really easy to tackle and it was very important for me. Uh, but um, a lot of organizations don't spend the time or extend the effort to train their employees about the criticalness of their customer service. And so that was one of the first uh, initiatives when I started writing. Second uh, initiative when I started writing it was um, helping people remake their sales careers in a lot of ways, whether it be for newbies that were coming in that didn't know anything, rookies, or people that have been doing it for a long time and had hit a wall or a plateau and been maybe through one or two sales roles, uh, would get to a point and then get laid off or fired. They needed to remake their careers. And what I have found in most cases is that salespeople never get the fact that if you do a good job with the people that you're engaged with and you are a problem solver, and yes, it's not always about your product or service. Sometimes it's about getting hold of and getting to know that individual and figuring out ways that you can help them in any capacity. That's where the magic is. And so for uh, the original intent of the book was it was going to be a sales book, helping people figure out why that relationship is critical and important. And as a sales rep, a sales rep has to close. A sales professional never has to close because a sales professional has identified problems, put forward positive solutions and helped that uh, customer understand the value that they're going to get from engagement or product or service. And most importantly, that they get that person as their number one person, their number one quarterback there, their chief interaction between that customer and the company. And um, I felt like there was not enough books that were addressing that. So the book evolved from there in a lot of ways. It's been adapted to help entrepreneurs and business leaders and clearly helps people from an engagement perspective, because at the end of the day, we can't do anything unless we're connecting and engaging with the right people the right way. Uh, but yeah, that was the original motivation. Thank you so much for that question. Whoever you are, it was awesome. I love that. I appreciate that very much. Uh, let's see. We got a few more. If there are any questions or comments that you want to drop in, uh, please do so. I would really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Um, here's one more. You can tell I'm kind of managing the board myself because I don't have staff. This one. This one. That's what it is. It is what it is, my friends. Uh, can you tell me more about your connection lab? Uh, Carol Manfred. Um, Carol, I don't think we've had uh, the pleasure of meeting, but thank you so much for that. I appreciate you being on the website and checking that out. Connection lab is actually something I put together as a deep dive uh, approach for helping individuals and corporations identify their critical connections and uh, that have maybe run, they've they've run into some sort of stoppage, right? You know, the relationships stopped growing, or they kind of made the introduction. Now they don't know what to do next. Connection Lab really is kind of a deep dive into some ideas and strategies to help take that connecting aspect a little bit further, uh, creating a different perspective. Sometimes having that outside perspective, which there's not generally an environment that I can't come up with an idea or strategy that will 
uh, certainly get that relationship moving in a, in a, in a more positive direction. Um, at least knock on wood, I haven't come up against one. Um, but the connection lab was really designed to help people that were really serious about their network, really serious about, um, building, uh, connections for an organization, you know, whether that be prospects, customers or employees. And so that's where it came about. Um, I will tell you that I've had just this week, I had a client that I, spent, um, we didn't really necessarily do a connection lab strategy. She was kind of on the fly. She's a coaching client of mine, but we actually went through a process of uh, understanding a upcoming meeting she was having and some challenges that she'd had connecting with the individual. And I just asked questions that she hadn't thought of. And we started talking about and formulating some ideas and strategies about how she could approach this meeting to set it apart, make it different from the other meetings. Well, it turned out that it ended up resulting in nearly $3 million worth of business for them in a way that they didn't expect because they thought this would be yet another meeting of an endless series of meetings in order to get to that yes. And it just took that. And so even though the promotion that we have on ripplecentral.com for the book, by the way, Ripple Central uh, has the book uh, and you can order it directly from there. I'll autograph it. There's a promotion that we've got going on right now where you can get an actual session with me for Connection Lab. It's a modified mini version of the Connection Lab, but it's still useful. I've had two people that have already done it and we've already had great success. We actually found uh, their way into a job opportunity in one instance. In the other instance, we have somebody that actually connected with somebody that they had knew that they had a possible um, product fit for this organization, but aside from connecting on LinkedIn, hadn't really taken it beyond that. So we worked up a, a you know, a strategy to forward that progress and uh, they had great success with it um, actually just this past week as well. So that is how the Connection Lab is really designed to work. It's really a deep dive into your network. It's a deep dive into the key relationships you want to build. We all have them and we all need them. And ultimately, we don't spend enough time in our network understanding what they are. And so that's what the key is. And so that Connection Lab is what it is. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I hope to come down to Miami someday very soon. I mean, Carol, maybe you can hook me up. Find me a client down there or a speaking opportunity. I have never been to Miami. Can you believe that? That is just wrong. And Miami Vice is one of my favorite all-time television shows. I mean, I think it would be awesome to be down there. I would look for Crockett and Tubbs, even though I know that they are like 90 now. Um, but I would I would still be doing it. I'd be looking for that black Ferrari, that white Ferrari, just buzzing around, looking for the drug dealers. Not that Miami has a drug problem, just saying. I'm just fiction. I understand that, but I always wanted to go check out Miami. It seems like a really cool place to hang out. That's for sure. Somebody just showed up and said there were no Star Wars references today. I'm so disappointed, Steve. You obviously joined the thread late. There are Star Wars references. I am taking off my clothes yet again. This is how I get views, guys. This is how I'm taking my clothes off. No, uh, not at all. That would definitely shut the camera off and YouTube would actually go away. I'm super pumped about The Mandalorian releasing today. I can't wait to see it with my boys. They're both in town today. We're just trying to find an hour where we're going to be in the same place at the same time to be able to do it. And I cannot wait. But I am a total Star Wars nerd. And Joanne, who's been on this call, probably still in from Puerto Rico while she's drinking a Mai Tai on vacation. She just finished reading The Ripple Effect. And I appreciate that. But now she has some catching up on her vacation to do because she was reading my book, not vacationing. She was supposed to. She and I are like symbiotic on this whole rip, uh, on this whole Star Wars thing. That is our ripple between each other. And it has uh, been a whole lot of fun. But I've enjoyed that process a great deal. Um, but yeah, Star Wars is the bomb, bomb diggity. So I promised everybody a big announcement. Big announcement is um, I'm, I'm pretty pumped, actually, about this. Uh, this is going to be an event that we're going to do. By the way, uh, you can find the ripple effect on Amazon. Oh, wait, what am I doing here? What am I doing? Bear with me one second. Hide. There we go. Um, you can find the book. That's what it looks like. That's the cover. Uh, you can find it on my website, ripplecentral.com. Had questions earlier. Can I find it on Amazon? Is it on Audible? Not yet, but will be. And so just wanted you guys to be aware of that. Uh, this is uh, time for the big, big, big announcement. The big announcement. The big announcement is, and I... I hope you like that graphic. Like I, I put that together in Photoshop myself. I'm pretty excited. 
during quarantine, somebody asked what, you know, what did I learn about or what, how did it change my ripple? I rippled my way to some better skill sets. That's what I did. I decided to overcome my fear of the camera and just start talking. I decided to film videos. I decided to uh, write some more. And then I taught myself some stuff about Photoshop. I am still completely lost, have no idea. I attended the Adobe conference last week. I am more lost than I was before I went into the conference, but you know what? I am still doing it. I am pushing myself to be better. And one of the things that you see up on the screen, that's exactly what I did. This thing right here, boom, boom. Now, uh, you know, I couldn't get the logos the right size, couldn't, you know. The big announcement though, I thought that you know, that little graphic was pretty awesome. I mean, I can't take credit for it, but it was out of stock images, but I had to like, do some object orientation to clean it up a little bit. I was pretty jazzed and pumped about that. But I am going to be hosting a Ripple book launch virtual happy hour, live stream virtual happy hour from six o'clock to, God, I have no idea when we'll finish. Uh, I have some special guests that I have invited to join us. Um, right now, I'm going to say, that we are about 80% confirmed on a super Hollywood star that is going to join me. No, it is not Matthew McConaughey. Apparently that, um, that cease and desist letter, uh, I, I think he meant it. I really do. Um, so he will not be joining us, unfortunately, unless somebody can actually talk him into it. And he'll like tell him you're doing something else, but then show him the way to the live stream. And then boom, yeah, I'll put him on and he, he, it'd be awesome. All right, all right, all right. This ripple. I'd love to hear him say that. Uh, but no, this is probably even bigger, bigger, like huge. No, not Ryan Reynolds. Uh, JLo uh, continues to not return my phone calls either. Um, Bruce Springsteen was going to stop by, play a set, um, but uh, then he got busy. Like, I think he had an appointment with the podiatrist. I'm, I'm not sure, but we are, it's going to be huge, epic. We're going to be doing some cool things during this process. But here's the thing. It'll be done on live stream with adult beverages. Yes, we will be drinking. You will be drinking. It'll be great. It will not be every time Steve says Ripple, let's take a shot, however. Although that would be a really cool idea for a promotion. Uh, we will not uh, do that. That probably doesn't sound like a good idea now that I think about it because I said it out loud. But uh, who knows? You know, we just never know. But uh, Monday evening, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. God dang it. I did forget that. Central Standard Time. Sorry about that, guys. 6 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, to whenever uh, we will be uh, doing this. I will be co-hosting this with my editor and my chief muse, uh, Mark Schwartz, provided he doesn't back out um, on me. Uh, I, I told him it was a big surprise party that was happening online for him, and he uh, he needed to be there. And uh, I think he's going to He'll show up, but then once he's there, uh, I'll make sure his wife just doesn't let him, you know, flip the laptop lid down. But it'll be great. It's going to be fantastic. Um, I feel like I'm Trump now. It's going to be huge. It's, it's going to be, it's like the greatest live stream anybody has ever, ever seen. Uh, going to be fantastic. Yes. Uh, anyway, see, I never get political, That, but, you know, that was, and I, I didn't even sound like him. I'm, I'm not a good New York impersonator. Don't have that voice, that thing. Anyway, uh, Monday night, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Please come by, join us. Uh, I will be at times putting out a public link where you can join and you can wave and show us your beverage of choice. And uh, then we might boot you. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll just have to see. But we have a lineup of some really amazing people that are big fans of the Ripple process. And uh, it has made a difference in their life, in their careers. And I would love it if you would join us. So 6 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, on Monday. And uh, now I need to break it to my soccer team. We don't have practice. I normally practice on Monday. Did not realize, did not plan for this very well because now the coach is slacking and uh, we're not going to have practice yet again. They're actually going to be off next week because, you know, we have a game this weekend and then we're going to, we're so beat up right now. It's not even funny. Anyway, I digress. We'll, but I will be here Monday, 6 p.m to whenever we finish up, uh, probably likely around 8.30, 8.45, but please come join us and, you know, bring comments and tell us how great you are and, uh, you, know, um, you know, tell us how awesome, you know, your day was, whatever, you know, anything goes, it'll be a live stream, plus there'll be adult beverages, so, you know, I mean, how bad could it suck? Let's be honest. Uh, in all honesty, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for um, spending a little bit of time with me this morning. 
I want to let everybody get back to their normal craziness of whatever it is that they're doing today. Uh, my Friday is pretty packed and uh, I'm excited about uh, some great things that I hope to finish up before the end of the week. Got some work to do over the weekend, but I hope everybody enjoys their weekend. Uh, you guys are phenomenal. I'm so grateful that you guys tune in. You, you respond to my quirkiness and, uh, you know, if you're not following me on social media, I highly encourage you to. It's at rippleon.com. Uh, you can also check out, um, you know, uh, my Instagram, same, same uh, handle as at rippleon. Find me on Facebook. And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, just, you know, if you happen by this or somebody told you to, you know, come, you know, check this out, I greatly appreciate it. I certainly um, I do appreciate you joining this morning and I just hope you have a great day. Go out, make a difference, make somebody smile create a positive ripple by somebody's standard and uh, go uh, ripple on. All right. Take care.